Welcome. Live from AU, I'm Cassandra Yocum, and this is The Digital Thread. Today I have Fred Ortiz from P2S with me to talk about The Digital Twin. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Cassandra. Let's dive into your Digital Twin experience. Where did it start? So my Digital Twin experience started a few years ago, right? Just learning about what a Digital Twin was and what it is. But the actual journey I've been on the last few months, last year, began in January as a de development incubator project for my firm. So since then, we've been getting into more research about digital twins, more case studies, and then that's how we found out of this tandem. Why were you interested in the digital twin? So I was personally interested because it was a buzzword, right? So all of my colleagues have been talking about it for the previous couple of years. And finally, my, my company tasked me and a few other of my colleagues to research it, to finally find a way that we could fit it into our, our portfolio at the firm. What value have you seen that the digital twin is going to provide your clients? So as far as value, the most important aspect of what we see in it is keeping our clients engaged longer than just through the construction process. We want to keep them engaged after the construction process, throw their, use their, our digital twin platform and your digital twin platform to keep them engaged and give them the ability to, to monitor their building in, in real time, historical data. That way they kind of have a sense of how their building's performing, how the, how the, 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 the um, equipment's performing, and how the, the space is performing as a, as a whole. How difficult is building a digital twin? It's been, it's been a challenge. Not the actual modeling of the, the Revit model, that's not too difficult because I'm a BIM manager for my firm, so I was lucky to team up with a mechanical engineer for my firm and an electrical. So we, we were able to tackle the modeling aspect pretty easily, but as far as making our, our connection from our BMS system, our backnet data LAN, getting into the cloud and getting that data ready to be pushed to tandem, that was the most challenging part for us. So we looked at the mul multiple providers to, to get a, to build us a customized service to make the connection from our local LAN to the, to the cloud. So luckily we stumbled across Tritium, who is the actual makers of the Niagara software. So they came, just recently came out with a product called their Niagara cloud service, or Niagara data service which actually does makes the connection for you from your LAN to the cloud. It throws your data up there seamlessly without having to get a customized service. Most of our projects we do with their BMS system, it's all often ran on the Niagara framework. So if we could keep this to the Niagara framework and get our digital twin pilot project um, solidified, we could actually help clients down the road with the same building management system, such as such a widely used software. What's your advice to other AEC firms building digital twins that are running into the same issue with the BMS system not integrating and the companies not necessarily having an integration? Right, so my, my advice to them would be to just stay consistent, be persistent, just keep working as hard as you can to find your solution because there will be one out there for you. We've been working on this, our project for almost a year now. We still haven't made the connection. So my advice would just to be, be persistent Look at all your options out there because there are a lot of companies that are selling fake digital twin services, not a true digital twin, which, which our industry is seeking. Do your homework, do your research, and just make sure you find the right company that's going to support you and the right fit that aligns with your company's values and wants to accomplish the same goals that you have. How do you see your clients using the digital twin? So one of the ways we want to provide our clients extra, extra services with the digital twin uh, platform we want to engage them longer after the construction process, like I mentioned earlier. So once the construction process ends for a project, we don't want to just like throw a model somewhere and let it just sit. We want to keep this living model, continue it on, move it over to tandem off of BIM 360 or ACC. We want to provide some value there for their, our customers can actually stay engaged with us, keep an eye on their building and feel like they're a part of the, the whole process of this digital twin platform. So our other option is we want to, actually, we want to talk to our clients that have, have existing buildings not necessarily a new building project that we're working on. We want to engage our current customers about their existing buildings. We want to actually help them go out there and maybe scan, laser scan for them, bring it back to the office, model it for them, the, the specific assets they want to show in their digital twin. And then we want to do that for them and then throw that model into the tandem as well for they can be able to monitor their, their, their building in, in real time as well. So we have two ways we're looking at it from new, new building construction to existing buildings. What do you think that future of digital twin technology looks like? We see the digital twin progressing from the early stages, getting into more predictive to more maintenance and then eventually autonomous. That way our, build, our building comes to life and it actually knows what's going on with it and it wants to fix itself. 
So we want to be able to provide that service to our, our customers down the road. Things are moving at a rapid pace. You got to keep up nowadays. It's not like the old times when we, we transitioned from AutoCAD to Revit. It was a slow process, but now everything's moving so quickly. We want to be able to keep our clients in the know and, and give them the latest technology and the latest um, software to keep their projects living and breathing and provide that, that digital twin service where they could actually monitor their, their buildings for the rest of the building life cycle. So when you're handing over your digital twin to clients, does P2S plan to have an educational program or train their clients on how to use the digital twin? Most, most definitely. So our plan is to, once we wrap up this pilot project with you and we have an actual living, breathing digital twin we can share with our clients, we were going to create uh, educational pieces, educational white papers for our clients and for our internal clients, which are our engineers. So we're going to inform our internal and our external clients about this through educational pieces. We're going to do a podcast as well. We're going to do some live demos about our digital twin process and we're ho hopefully do something with you guys down the road, right? Maybe do a class at AU potentially to, to keep this thing going. How did you gain buy-in from upper management to do this pilot? Oh, good question. So I actually didn't have to, have to get buy-in from them. They came to me and my team with this idea. So just to give you a backstory about how this came about at P2S, we have a development incubator team every year, which pulls in about five to 10 different groups. So I was part of a group this year that was assigned researching digital twins. So they already bought into it. They already see the, the benefits. They just put their faith in me and my team to research it, come up with some good ideas. The main reason we, we like to stay ahead of the curve with this stuff is we don't want to get left behind in the industry. We like to be forward thinking innovators as a firm. So for us moving forward with this, we could actually help our clients move forward with their projects as well. And as far as other people doing this, it's you don't want to get left behind. Digital Twin is not just a buzzword anymore. It's actual thing that's taking place in our industry, AC. But it, it has, it's been around for a long time. It's been around in the manufacturing industry for a long time. But now that it's finally hitting the AC, you got to get on board else you're going to get left behind. Coming from construction, I see a lot of AEC firms, especially those mid-sized GCs, right. who are afraid to adopt new technology because they find it intimidating or they don't see what the end value is going to really be. Right. Whereas you see some of them that are eager to adopt what advice do you have for those mid-sized GCs that don't understand where the digital twin fits in their workflow? Yeah, so my advice to them would be to to really to not just think it's a, a, a flash in the pan kind of software. It's something, it's not just a buzzword anymore. It's something that's coming to fruition in our industry. And lucky for me, I've been working on a lot of big, bigger projects with, with general contractors that are already using Revit and fabrication tools in 3D. So with them, working with them, they're they're taking our 50% CD typically model and they're fabricating it to the exact specifications or exact uh, guidelines of uh, the design. So the way it would benefit them is that they're already doing it in 3D. They're creating this beautiful 3D fabricated model. You might as well just keep sticking with that and push it forward, push it to tandem for you can give your clients more, more value for their projects and keep them engaged longer like I mentioned earlier. At P2S, we pride ourselves on customer service and repeat business. So that would be my advice is to cater to your clients' needs, give them what, what they're asking for because they are asking for digital twins out there. It's not a buzzword like I mentioned. It's, it's a real thing. So they're asking for it. Don't be shy. Don't be intimidated. Go for it. Research it. Take the time to really find the right solution and you're going to be successful at it. But it's all about the time and effort you put in. Fred, okay. thank you so much for joining me today. For those of you watching, if you're interested to hear more about his digital twin journey, we'll be putting out a client success story soon. Great. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you, Cassandra. Thank you. Appreciate it.